everyone, I'm Hannah, and I'm here with Dartmouth College's CEPA program in order to help you understand the greenhouse effect in a bottle. So in our air, there are a lot of different gases, and the way that they absorb energy from the sunlight is very different. And so what we want to understand is how carbon dioxide, or CO2, which is a byproduct of a lot of the things that we burn, like gasoline or when volcanoes go off, how that reacts with sunlight, and if it gets hotter, if it gets colder when exposed to sunlight than our typical air that we breathe in. So in order to show you how to do this experiment, David is going to walk you through the setup, and then we'll actually run the experiment for you. Thank you, Hannah. My name is David, and I'm also a scientist here at Dartmouth. I'm going to walk you through how we set up running this experiment in our lab here at Dartmouth. Um, although, of course, you'll have all different equipment in your lab, um, hopefully this provides you a little bit of a guideline how you might set this experiment up. The first step in setting up this experiment is to gather all the materials and equipment that you'll need to run it. Um, first off, we have a light bulb. Um, here it's actually, for this experiment, it's best to use an old-fashioned incandescent bulb because the light that an incandescent bulb generates is very similar to uh, the light that the sun generates. Both of them are big hot objects uh, that just pump out a bunch of light. And so here I have a, an old school halogen light bulb um, that I'm going to put into our lamp, which is our uh, simulated sun for this experiment. Perfect. Um, the next critical piece of equipment that you'll need are two bottles. Um, they don't have to be, you know, this particular size bottle, uh, but you do want them to be the same size uh, because that way the experiment is, is as well controlled as possible. And uh, what we're going to do for each of these bottles uh, is that we're going to put a, a temperature sensor in the bottle. Now, sorry about that. now in this case, um, I have these little thermistor bead temperature sensors um, that are wired into this data logger, but you could use any temperature sensor that you have. Uh, this is just a convenient setup because it has a nice screen uh, that hopefully you'll be able to see as we run the experiment. So I'm going to take one of these, these temperature probes. Uh, in this case, I'll take the probe from the channel 2 temperature right here. And uh, I'll pick one of my bottles to be the bottle that just has regular air in it. And so here's, here's this bottle. Uh, fortunately, it's already full of air, so there's nothing more we have to do here. Uh, the only thing that we'll do is we'll put our, our temperature probe in. This is uh, nice to keep them, you know, up somewhere in the middle. It doesn't have to be super precise. And now we need to seal the top. Now, in this case, I'm going to seal the top here with a little bit of paraffin, um, which is just a, a kind of wax that you can use to, to seal flasks. But you could probably make this work with a little bit of duct tape or a bottle cap um, and some, some scotch tape or, or however you want. Uh, but because, because we have the paraffin here, I'm going to use this. OK. This is this is our bottle of regular air. I'll set it up uh, over here such that it's it's in front of our light source. Um, and you may need to to actually tape the bottle in place. I think it looks like yep, it looks like this bottle is not going to behave on its own. And so I'll tape it in place uh, just with a little bit of masking tape. Cord management can always be a little bit of a problem. Um, cool. All right. And one thing that, that you'll note about this setup is we've uh, set up our background here so it's very symmetrical and that's going to make it easy for us to make sure that we're positioning the light in between the two bottles 
uh, so that the two bottles are getting exactly the same amount of light. All right, so for our next bottle, this one we're gonna wanna put carbon dioxide in, and uh, that's a little bit more challenging. Now, there's various ways you could go about uh, putting carbon dioxide in the bottle. Um, sorry, I'm just cutting a little bit of parafilm here so that once I have the bottle ready. Um, so like I said, there's various ways you can put carbon dioxide into the bottle. In this case, what I'm going to use is a, a canister of carbon dioxide gas. Um, these you can get basically at any mountain biking shop, uh, which is very convenient. And so uh, this little steel canister uh, is full of gas. And then I have uh, a bike tire inflator. This is basically just a, a valve and a nozzle. And so to, uh, to get the CO2 out of here, first we thread the inflator onto the canister. Alrighty, so uh, now we have our inflator attached. And so what I'm going to do um, is basically just put the, uh, the CO2 in here. I'll open the valve, that'll shoot CO2 um, out this nozzle into the bottle. Now, CO2 is a bit heavier than, um, CO2 is a, a little bit heavier than air. And so it'll naturally fill up the bottle, plus we're releasing a bunch all at once. Uh, then I'll put the temperature probe in and finally seal it off with a little bit of paracone. Ready, set so here. Okay, so now we have both of our bottles uh, sealed with our pro uh, probes in them. This bottle has the CO2, this one has uh, regular air. And so uh, I'm just going to take, take this bottle and tape it up uh, next to the other. Now, one thing that I always try to do, uh, because CO2, of course, is uh, in, uh, it's a colorless gas, and so it's always a good idea to to label uh, which one is. So. Uh, finally, we're just going to yeah. so now both of those are in place. Um, our next step here will be taking uh, our light and positioning it so that it's centered on these two. Hannah, you've got a good angle. Can you see if the light is, is centered? The light centered on the two bottles. Um, I'll just position this so that you can see them. Uh, now keep in mind that channel two we have here, which is this blue, temp uh, blue temperature, is going to the regular air bottle. And channel one, which is the red temp uh, box here, is going to the CO2 bottle. And so um, once we're gonna wait for a few minutes to let these temperatures equalize so that they start from the same point, 
and then we'll go ahead, turn on the light, and record our temperatures uh, to run this experiment. All right, hi everyone, it's Hannah again. So I will start by saying that we just slightly adjust our setup. So we did move the um, thermal sensors a little bit lower down, and we also added more carbon dioxide to our bottle because we didn't get quite enough the first go around. And ideally, while we did use the black for spacing, it is better to have a white background for this experiment. And so we're gonna get our baseline temperatures at time zero for right now, that's 26.1 for both. And then we're gonna get our stopwatch all set up right there. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn the lamp on and start the timer. All right, at one minute in, we're at 27.5 for the carbon dioxide and 27.2 for the air. All right, at two minutes, we're at 27.9 for the CO2 and 27.6 for air. Right at three minutes, we're at 28.2 for the CO2 and 27.9 for the air. at four minutes or at 28.4 for the CO2 and 28.0 for air.
it at five minutes, we're at 28.7 degrees Celsius for CO2 and 28.1 degrees Celsius for air. All right, and that's where we're going to end this experiment. You can let it go a little longer if you want, but I think we have the data that we need. Another one again. So I have our data here from what we saw in the experiment. And one of the key takeaways is that not only did carbon dioxide increase faster in temperature than air, but it was actually capable of sustaining that elevated temperature too. So I really want you to take a second and think, do these results make sense? Did you expect that? What would happen if we added more carbon dioxide? What about if we tried with different gases? How do those things affect our environment? That's a really big question that a lot of us need to start thinking about as we think about the climate and our future. Because while 0.6 degrees Celsius uh, might not seem like a big change, if you think about the world and everywhere in the world increasing by 0.6 degrees Celsius, that's quite substantial. And that's a major theme that you're gonna carry through this lesson plan.